10 tips to grow a huge amount of food, even in the middle of the city. They never make it home. One of the best things that you could plant in your garden for natural pest control in a well-balanced environment is using flowers. We plant loads of different flowers around the garden because the key is to diversify as much as you can to encourage pollinators to come to your garden, but also predatory insects so you don't have to worry that much about pests, but let nature take care of it. One of the most common flowers that we plant around the main crops is marigolds because they have symbiotic relationships with a few plants like tomatoes but they're also great for their medicinal properties and that's why we dry them and make oil but you could also use nasturtium which is a great plant the entire plant is edible you can eat leaves seeds flowers and they're considered a sort of sacrificial plant because pests like black flies tend to invade this plant but it doesn't stop there because we use even sunflowers around the borders to add a touch of beauty and whenever they're dry they are a great snack for wild birds or you can can use them in the kitchen for sunflower butter or just in your salad but there are also medicinal plants like calendula which gets dried and used to infuse oil which is absolutely amazing for your skin and it also attracts overflies which are amazing predatory insects for aphids or you could plant something more perennial like lavender which comes back every single year or yarrow with incredible medicinal properties borage which has flowers that taste like fresh cucumber one of the things that you should plant that will help you to save a lot of money is herbs. We tend to plant herbs in the garden based on what we normally consume at home and this includes thyme, chive, oregano, basil, sage and many other herbs that we got planted and interplanted with other variety of plants. But you could also clone your herbs to have a sort of unlimited supply. You just need to pick up a couple of stem of like basil, clean the bottom part and then stick them into a cup of water and in about 7 to 14 days they will produce roots and then you can transplant it again into your garden to have a brand new plant. The next tip is to not focus all your energies on just growing food but creating a proper ecosystem. What I mean is to add features to your garden which improve the diversity of wildlife and insects like this pond that we built here which is an old oak barrel topped up with water, water plants and a solar pump inside to recirculate the water but also keep some of the plants that were already there like we did with some comfrey plants which produce amazing flowers and it's a great source of fertilizer so you can make your own at home. Adding wood chips to all your pots is another way to offer shelter for the life in your soil. Tip number four is to never stop sowing your seeds. Soil doesn't need to rest and you can literally keep sowing directly outdoor like we do at the base of corn planting beans. They can use the stalks to climb up or indoor inside a greenhouse like we're doing here using the system that was kindly gifted and it's absolutely amazing because I had a great germination rate and I will leave the link in the description. The trick is to always have a backup because you never know that you're gonna lose or fail to grow some plants so by sowing another batch you could always replace them on time for the growing season. Lastly for many plants I use a technique called multi-sowing which means planting more than one seedling especially for beetroots so they grow in clumps. Tip number five it's all about the infamous weeds which are not your enemy but an amazing source of nutrients like making your own fertilizer by either adding them to a bucket add a handful of leaf mold and then top it up with water which will slowly decompose it and improve the diversity of microorganisms that then you can use into your garden or you can simply chop them down and weight them and add equal amount in jaggery sugar to then leave them to ferment for seven days and extract this dark liquid and you can feed it to your plants alternatively you can just do chop and drop which means chopping the weeds from an area of your garden and leave them to dry and 
decompose, slowly releasing nutrients into the ground. And I made an entire video about how to use weeds in your garden, which I will link up here. Coming up next in our list of tips for your garden, we have making living soil. People often ask me, what do you apply to your garden to feed your plants? But to be honest, I don't do anything if not enriching the life because we top up every single year with a thin layer of organic compost that we make at home or also making compost tea, which means adding a few handful of compost into a bucket, top it up with water and mix it well before applying it around around your garden so a healthy soil equal healthy plants however we add a few other amendments like volcanic rock dust sprinkled around the garden slowly releasing minerals into the ground but also em1 which is effective microorganisms for a slow release inside your tank of water the next essential tip for your garden is to stay on top of your gardening chores one of the main things is having a schedule for watering and it could be pretty challenging if you live in a dry climate or if it didn't rain for quite a long time like it happened in UK but also pruning tomatoes so removing the lower leaves but also the suckers which you can then transfer into a container with water and have an exact copy of your plant ready to be transplanted in the garden pruning cucumbers and make sure they are twisted around trellises but also harvesting which seems quite obvious but if you don't keep on top of harvesting for example your courgette they will easily turn into marrow sucking a lot of energy from your main plant one of the main tasks for every single gardener is saving your own seeds you can do this in pretty much any space depending on the variety of seeds that you would like to save we do it with beans and peas leaving a few pots on the plant to dry out so then we can crack it open and save the seeds inside or with many different varieties of flowers leaving flower heads to dry completely and then removing the petals which end up being seeds at the base but you could also do it with tomatoes by fermenting them in water for a few days, strain it, leave it to dry, and they will store for a really long time. Another fun one to do is poppies, which could be done with your kids, as from every flower head, there will be a lot of seeds that you could either plant next season or use in the kitchen. Or even nasturtium are fully edible, taste a bit peppery. If you just leave them to dry, grind them up, and then you can either mix them with salt or have them as is. Tip number nine, which is actually one of the best things if you don't have enough time to visit your garden is mulching you can use many things to mulch your garden and they all have different benefits well rotted wood chips it's ideal to top up some of your shrubs like raspberry gooseberry and so on what we mainly use in the garden is straw because it retains moisture and it slowly releases minerals so what I do is to apply a thick layer of straw around my plants but it doesn't stop there because you can actually inoculate your straw with different varieties of mushrooms like wine cups have symbiotic relationships with your plants and they help them to absorb more nutrients and more water but you also have a new source of food which grows in between your main crops mulching is mainly essential if you grow in plants in pots or raised beds where the space is limited and so the amount of water available for your plants and lastly but not less important than all the other tips is to use a no dig approach no dig is great for a variety of reasons like for example not disrupting the natural functions of microorganisms in your soil improving soil structure so it retains more water less weeds overall all across your garden and way less back pain because you don't have to bend down to do all the normal chores that you would have to do without using it. To start our growing space, we combine different principles from no dig, like applying cardboard to obstruct the light for the weeds to grow, but also permaculture, like for example, layering comfrey and compost and other components like uh, logs, uh, twigs, straw, and many other things to save money in the garden and slowly decompose and release that carbon required for the plants to grow and Korean natural principles to make our own fertilizer to use in the garden so all this is to say to not focus on a single method but combine different things and try what works for you in the garden I hope you liked today's video and if so please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week for another episode thank you so much for watching